Howdy, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be looking at the support tier list for the newest patch. I think it's 13.6. Uh, probably should have double checked that uh, beforehand here. Let's see. Yeah, 13.6. There we go. <laughs> so I realized um, I didn't get a tier list out last patch. I apologize for that. I was on vacation for half of it and just had a bunch of school and other things going on. But we're here, we're doing it this time. And there have been some relatively interesting developments going on here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get in here. Um, I will say before anybody asks, yes, Melio is on here. This tier maker that I have doesn't have him because he's brand new and I didn't want to go get the icon for him. So the ghost right here thing is Melio and I am going to talk about him a lot in the video. So he's there. Um, I didn't forget about him. And it, uh, be sure also if you enjoy the content, uh, like, subscribe, come by, check out the stream. Most nights, usually around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There are a few nights where I may not be able to make it, but I'm there most of the time. So if you want to talk about the tier list, other support champions, just life in general, um, then come on out and check it out. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. So I still think Rakan is the strongest. That's debatable right now. I think that Melio is also quite good. Um... But I'm going to start with Rakan, and I play Rakan all the time. If you haven't been to the stream, he's basically my one trick this season, and most seasons I usually end up playing him for 60 or 70% of my games um, since his release in Season 8. He's really good. He's really versatile, and that's why, you know, anytime anyone asks, well, who do I recommend that you try to learn as far as, like, a one trick, I think Rakan is great. The other one in the conversation is Thresh. We can talk about Thresh. But especially for the last few seasons, uh, Thresh has had a really hard time sort of maintaining his place in the meta. He's always been a fan favorite. Everyone likes watching Thresh games, and a lot of people like playing Thresh. But there are some parts of his kit that are just um, don't fit quite as well with kind of a lot of the modern day champions as things like Rakan. And again, we'll get to Thresh here in a minute. Because um, he is doing very well right now. He had been kind of in the in the gutter for the last couple of seasons, but he's finally coming back a little bit. But as far as Rakan goes, what makes him so strong right now, and then why is he so strong historically? Well, um, first of all, what's making him strong right now, particularly that was relatively new over the last couple of patches, is they buffed his Q. So they took it from 60 mana at all ranks down to 45 at all ranks, which is a big deal because... Um, they also buffed Relic Shield to make it to where you want to get Relic Shield almost all the time on Rakan. You can do Spell Thieves if you like, but um, he doesn't have a lot of great ranged ways to proc that, so you have to go in and trade with them pretty aggressively pretty often in order to get the full value out of that Spell Shield or Spell Thieves and make sure that you're going to get your wards on time. And in some lanes, that's just not possible. Like A lot of times you, you can, and you should be looking for places to trade, but there are some times where, um, especially if you get behind, that may not be um, may not be a smart play. <laughs> and you might feel forced to do it just to get your stacks for your uh, wards, and that's not a good idea. So anyways, Relic Shield, that's the go-to. What does that mean? That means your mana is a lot more constrained in the early game because you don't have any mana regen, uh, especially if you're not going for Shirelia's. Shirelia's is still a good item, um, but there are other options as well that are quite nice. So taking that down 15 mana to uh, 45 mana from 60 is a big deal for Rakan because he does struggle with mana a little bit in the early game compared to some of the other uh, champions out there. They also lower the cooldown by uh, one second so you can cast this more often in the landing phase and they increase the healing by a pretty substantial amount. It used to be 30 to start with and I don't remember what it capped out at, maybe like 150. But now it scales much better and it doesn't look like it's that big of a deal in the early game, but it is. Because you have to remember, this is not just healing on him. It's healing on one other person in these team fights, or um, in the early game trades, I should say. And then in team fights, um, it can be even more than that, right? Sometimes if everyone's stacking up on Baron and they've taken a little bit of damage after a fight and it's a little bit dangerous, you can get everyone to huddle on top of you. You hit the Baron with a Q or you hit the Dragon with a Q. You know, you could potentially heal your entire team for 150 or something like that, which does add up. Um, so it seems relatively minor, but it has been a pretty big buff. It gave him a couple of percentage points um, over time. I don't think they did anything else particularly notable um, that's helping him, his win rate right now. But 
that was historically his weakest part was in the early game and now it's very very difficult to push him out of lane because he has this refillable shield that comes in fairly frequently which you know gives you a lot of extra trade capacity and then again being able to spam this q more is going to give you more effective health it's going to give your uh, partner more effective health so it's really difficult to poke him out of lane it can be done but it's challenging and all ends are still quite hard um, to pull off against Rakan because he's going to take Guardian, which is going to give you, you know, really good anti all in. Um, and then he also has his double shield, which is a big shield, by the way. That's a 300 shield over time. They may have nerfed that a little bit. I feel like it used to be more than 300. Maybe it was less. Maybe it was a 140 shield. I can't remember. But anyways, it's a 1.4 AP ratio with a 300 shield, which is one of the biggest baseline shields in the game of a normal ability so that's quite nice it also um, gives him a ton of mobility so you have up to three dashes you have two off of your e and then of course you have your w which is an engage plus a dash it's also an um free free form dash or whatever it does not require a target so this is part of what makes him unique compared to most other supports and just extremely good at vision control scouting roaming all that kind of stuff because he can almost always get away Right, you can W over you know any wall. You can W through minions, whatever. And then if you can get within range of an ally, then you can E to them as well. So, you know, he can jump like a full screen length away just about to get out of situations. So he's very slippery, and that also gives him one of the best engages in the game because he can gap close so much. He can come flying in, you know, uh, with his E and then W onto somebody, and then he's running, you know, a million miles an hour with his R. So he can cover a lot of ground really quickly, whether it's defensively or offensively. So it gives him a ton of versatility, allows him to place some of those more dangerous wards deeper in the enemy jungle. Um, just allows him to be in certain positions, doing certain things that other champions really can't do outside of like maybe Pike it has a similar type of mechanic with, where he can dash through walls with his E and then he can go invisible and gets a lot of movement speed. Pike is also very slippery. But it's a lot more difficult to engage. Um, as Pike, you have to hit your hook a lot of times or flash and use your E stun. Um, and then you're going to be in a really vulnerable state. Versus Rakan, a lot of times, can go in with his W, look for an engage. If it doesn't work out, he can go back out with his E. Um, and he has all that protection, right? With the double shield, Guardian, the ability to get something like Knight's Vowel. So he can still protect people really well for um, an Enchanter type of champ. So all of these are, you know, big reasons why Rakan is so strong. Historically, um, that's why I play him a lot. That's why I think he's really good. But on top of that, um, these are just some of the newer reasons why people are rediscovering why Rakan is strong. Uh, and if we go to Lolitics here, we'll just hit the items really quick. I don't think a lot has changed kind of in the Rakan item meta. I will say a couple of things real quick, and then we'll move on um, and talk about Melio. But... You know, Shirelia's is very good. It does allow you to get that movement speed, which is obviously quite nice. Uh, and it allows your teammates to catch up with you when you do that engage. Because that is one risk of Recon. You have a ton of mobility, but some of your teammates may not be able to catch up in time. Because you don't have a very long duration of CC. Right? You've got your maxed out um, charm is like 1.75 seconds. Usually it'll be 1.5 at level 11. Then you have the W for a 1 second knockup. So the best case scenario is two and a half seconds of CC. But most of the time, you're probably just going to charm and then W them with the charm going. Um, so you're really only going to get like, you know, one to one and a half seconds of CC. So that ensures people are going to be able to catch up and make a play off of your engage. That is handy. However, it does not have any resistances on it. So if you get caught in a CC chain then there's a pretty good chance you're going to die. You can get Mercury Treads to help out for that. You obviously still have Guardian. You can take stuff like Knight's Vow second to help out with that. But you're just going to be a lot squishier if you take this item. So that's definitely one thing to consider. It also doesn't amplify damage at all. So if your team is going to have to try to you know take down a Cho'Gath or a Scion or a Sejuani, um, tanks are coming back into the meta in a big way. And so having some kind of damage amp can be good. Now, I've been playing a lot and using um, Even Shroud, and I've found a lot of success with this item. I know statistically it does look pretty bad here, but having that extra 10% damage, because remember, that's not just on the champion that you CC, it's on every champion around them for like 
700 units or something. So basically, the entire team is going to be taking um, 10% more damage for 5 seconds uh, off of Even Shroud. And it has that 30 armor and 30 magic resist. So if you think you're going to be able to get on them anyways, right? Like if you don't necessarily need the uh, Shirelias, then having that extra damage can be very nice. Radiant is still good. I have people ask me about this on stream quite a bit because this was the go-to a few patches ago before they nerfed it. It is still really good. It's just the big problem with Radiant is it's so expensive now. 3200 is a lot um, for a support item. But if you have, if the fights are going to be going on for a while, and especially if you have some of those tanks on your team, the Cho'Gaths, the Scions, all of those types of champs, um, then Radiant is very nice. Particularly if you don't have any other major healing threats on your team. So in other words, if it's unlikely the enemy is going to be getting Grievous Wounds, then Radiant gets even more valuable. So still quite a good item. It's just very expensive. It can throw back your tempo a little bit, and it doesn't help you... Um, snowball is hard especially if you're already ahead so it's okay i think locket is a trap most of the time for recon players uh it looks good but you got to remember that's a decaying shield over two and a half seconds they don't quantify that very well so it might look like you're giving your allies a 250 shield but you know over one second or whatever it might only be a 150 shield by the time they actually get hit um and not all of your allies are going to benefit from that shield most of the time so this is a pretty good item um, if they have a lot of AOE damage. They have like a Karthus or a Ziggs and a Mumu, that type of thing. Those aren't like super meta comps right now that I can think of or like these huge like AOE damage comps. It's just a lot of bruisers and fighters. Um, so it just feels like a lot of that value gets wasted. But in very specific circumstances, it could be good. And those are really the only four items I would probably consider in the current meta um i mean proto belt does look like it has a nice win right there if you're super far ahead maybe you could do that but honestly if you're really far ahead and you just want to snowball i'd rather get something like a mage eyes just invest in like um the the ring and then if you're turbo far ahead just get the mage eyes instead of uh, committing to that um and then as far as runes uh, i had someone recommend a video to me um, from Feather Daddy, and I've watched it, and he's trying to make the case for Glacial Augment, and first of all, he's obviously a really good player. He's been Challenger for a long time, so no disrespect uh, intended, but my personal experience with Glacial is I tried it out for maybe 15 games or so. I think I had like a 37% win rate or something. Now, there may have been other things going on. That is a relatively small sample size, but my overall win rate on Recon especially if we take out those glacial games, those 15 or so glacial games, is probably hovering somewhere near 54, 55%. So it was like a 15% swing um, on that. So it, it was just really, really bad. <laughs> it was not a good experience for me. Um, and as you see, like, and again, it's not just the items and everything, but just with stuff like this Even Shroud, I've really been digging that lately. It's been working out um, pretty well, just that damage amplification even though it has a low percentage. So, anyways, I, the problem, I think, theoretically with Glacial is what he was saying is that it gives you extra CC, and Rakan does lack the CC, so having that slow gives your teammates time to catch up, make plays, all of that. So it gives Rakan extra utility, and that is true. And his, But his argument against Guardian was that a lot of it gets wasted early on, because you don't get the full value out of the shield when somebody trades onto you. And then late game, you know, if you're positioning well, then you don't need the Guardian. And he was also saying that, he was implying that Guardian is just for, like, super passive, like, weak Recon players, effectively. He's like, well, if you're an Iron, you can use Guardian or whatever. Um, but... Sorry, let me just pull up the pro games here uh, with Recon. Just to make, just to uh, cast that uh, aspersion out there, or get rid of that, I suppose. Um, in that, you know, just anecdotally, no pro players or very, very few pro players run Guardian or run um, the uh, Ice Rune, right? 3.6. I guess if you combine those two together, it's what, 6% or something run that. And then you have over 90%. 
a running guardian, and I would not call most players, most pro players from every region, really passive recon players, right? Maybe some of them, but not all of them, right? And so clearly it's not just sort of a style of play. It's not just how are you feeling, or it's not anything about necessarily competence. There's some of that, but it's just this protects you personally. That's the big draw, is that guardian the shield does add up over time it does scale with plus healing and shielding if you get any of that it does scale with your bonus health um and it's it's a big deal like having an extra 100 health effectively on yourself and on an ally is the difference between life and death in a lot of situations um and the secondary runes aren't insanely great right font of life is okay if you want to take ardent sensors staff of flowing water which are both pretty off meta um, but it still provides like an okay amount of healing. If you think you're going to be able to push your lane and get ahead, you can do Demolish. He made a point that he thinks Demolish is really bad because it gets reduced because Rakan's a ranged champion. Maybe he did, Maybe it was an older video. I thought it was since this change had been made in the preseason. Maybe he was just forgetting this, but they changed Rakan to code him as a melee champion now. So that doesn't apply. He does get full value out of Guardian. Um... And then, like, Second Wind is still really good. It has been nerfed, but it's still really good for trading and dealing with Poke, which is Rakan's biggest weakness in the game, is early on. If you want to scale for later, conditioning is still quite good. And then something like Revitalize is incredibly powerful if you want to go for a Radiant or a Locket build. Um, you've got Unflinching, which has been nerfed, but is still, like, okay, right, if they have a lot of CC. Um, and then Overgrowth is okay, but not amazing either. So you have like pretty good secondaries. You have pretty good with inspiration too. Obviously, cosmic insight is fantastic. Futures market and biscuits are okay. You don't really need the mana off of biscuits as much. Um, boots are like historically really good if you're in the inspiration tree, but Recon specifically wants boots early, not just because it unlocks your ability to roam, but because a lot of his engages are predicated on your movement speed. Your W scales of movement speed, your R scales of movement speed. So you want your boots early as Recon. So I tried it out. It felt good. I felt rich, you know, getting the free boots, getting the futures market. Um, and the Glacial is cool. Like, it's flashy. It's like, oh, they're slowed. But Guardian just does so much under the hood that just gets lost in the shuffle, I think. Like, it, it does actually help you out. Like, even if it just blocks 50 damage, you know, every one minute in the laning phase, that's a lot. Right? When you combine it with you're blocking 50 damage, then you've got your passive shield, which is giving you extra reduction every 30 seconds or so. Then you've got your Q, which is healing you up in the laning phase. Then you've got second wind, which is healing you through the laning phase. Um, so you start adding all of this together, and it, it makes you very resilient to a lot of poke and helps you kind of power through to that mid-game and late game where Rakan really shines with those engages. So that's my experience with Guardian. Obviously, Feather Daddy is a very smart player. I appreciate him putting out that articulate video that really gave me some stuff to think about and try out um, with Glacial. But I disagree, you know, respectfully disagree. I think Guardian's a lot better at my ELO bracket, which is platinum right now, usually platinum, low diamond. And then clearly at the pro level as well, um, everybody is choosing Guardian. So, and I just don't think that many people are going to be that wrong on champions. You know, he's like the number one played champion on last patch. And one of the highest win rate champions um, as well. So, situationally, it could be good. There are other players that do get Glacial. I know it seems weird that things like Nautilus and Leona would want Glacial, but not Rakan. But it's, it's a different vibe. Like, Rakan can get away with Guardian because he doesn't have to sit there and face tank stuff as much. So he doesn't need Aftershock. And then as far as Glacial goes... Um, he just scales really well with Guardian and just the kind of play style that he has, right? He's not as tanky as Leona and Nautilus. So having that extra protection is really good for him. So anyways, that's my thoughts on a couple of questions I get pretty often, things that I've been experimenting with in terms of items and runes. Let's talk about Melio here. Um, so he's really good. He's better than I thought he was going to be. I honestly thought he was going to come in, I think I said on stream, between 40 and 45%. But there are some things about his kit that are difficult to appreciate unless you play him or play against him a bunch. Everyone and wants to make their mark on the world. In a relatively well, why make just one? Pretty quickly. Um, and I don't think I've played against him yet. But uh, it really is this Q is the thing Larry, are we still on that... For three? 
I underestimate it and then I think a lot of other people underestimate to it and just kind of it's weird interactions like how far it can go through minions and just like how big the radius is on the circle once it goes through a minion and it actually gives him like pretty decent wave clear with the Q early on which was uh, one concern that I had was that you know it felt like he was trying to be karma-esque with a lot of early pressure but I just wasn't sure about the wave clear but it, it checks out, and his uh, passive damage was really strong, and this is one thing that I talked about before, that like maybe I'm underestimating that. But yeah, like at level 3, for example, you get 31 damage there, and then if it goes through the 80 carry, then you know they're going to be doing an extra, um, I don't know, whatever that number is, 15 damage. So you're basically getting an extra like 45 damage on your auto attack. And you can throw your Q through people and trigger that. You can put your W on somebody and trigger that. Um, so it, there are a lot of different ways that you can trigger it and it does like pretty high base damage too like 90 um, with a 0.9 now you're not getting that much AP with him but that is something that's helpful and it does have a uh, pretty good range now they've updated all this now to kind of let you know champion knockback distance is 190 um, champion hit and reveal explodes, explosion radius is a little bit more uh, so, you can kick this. It is very good at um, dealing damage early. It does have that knockback, and people have pointed that out, that that's Janna-esque, right, where it stops mobility and has a pushback component too. So if you have something like an Alistar trying to engage or a Rakan running at you with W or Leona, Nautilus, whatever, like you can push them back with that Q and basically prevent it. So it's like a Janna Tornado, but instead of just knocking them up for that little second... It also pushes them away from you, which is helpful, and it puts a slow on them and does more damage to them. I don't know what the heck is going on with this. Um, I'm going to have to exit out of this page in a second. But it is a very, very good trading tool, and it's a good peeling tool for later on in the game. So that's the thing. Now, the W here, I was kind of underestimating. The heal, frankly, does look kind of wimpy. But um, it is quite a bit in the early game. It does cost a lot of mana. They have to sit in it for six seconds, but you can reposition it. If you keep casting W, you can have it move with your person. And one thing that I underestimated is that... Oh my gosh, really? Okay, it's exiting out of that. Okay, you can you can end the ads. That's fine with me. <laughs> um, is that each tick of this counts as a spell affecting somebody. So why is that important? Airy. Okay, so when your teammate sits in this, then every time Aerie is going to come off of them and come back to you, it'll automatically go back to them a lot of times. So in other words, you put this on them, it's going to trigger Aerie two or three times, which is a lot of shielding, especially in the early game. So Aerie gives you extra damage when you you know hit them with your Q, but then it also gives them this shield a lot um, over and over again. And that will... Uh, rebuff people with things like font of life uh ardent sensor staff of flowing water you don't get a lot of those things very often with him but airy is the big one where it keeps triggering airy over and over again on somebody um so that's really strong later on in the game that's pretty good scaling but it's also quite good in the early game as well so the extra range is still whatever like i think that's a lot better at high reloads and people pointed out oh it's op with caitlin and stuff like that it's like yeah it is but with a lot of champions, it doesn't feel like it's that big of a deal. A lot of people don't leverage the range too much, but it's there. Um, so you're getting a lot of airy healing or a lot of airy shielding off of this. You're getting a lot of total healing off of this. Um, so it is a pretty good trading tool overall. And then warm hugs. They did nerf this, I think, a little bit, the cooldown on it. Um, it is a pretty big burst shield at 280 when you double tap the shield. Um and it does give quite a bit of movement speed. So he can help people, prevent people from getting like blown up really easily, right? So you have your Q to peel for them. You have your W to kind of buff them up, give them a heal. You have a really big like burst shield you can put on them for 280. Um, and then, of course, you have your ultimate, which has a heal, but then also um, cleanses them of any crowd control effects. Now, it's still a pretty long cooldown. Um 
but obviously it's it's going to be quite strong in a lot of situations. So I have not really been able to see him personally in the late game. He is good. He does have good peeling. His engage is pretty bad late game. So I think he's really kind of a lame bully early on, kind of in the sense of, you know, something like a karma or uh, a lux or something like that. But I think it's going to be hard for him, similar to those champions, it's going to be hard for him to make plays in the late game. You know, he's just not going to have that go button like a Nautilus or a Rakan or an Annie. Um, and, you know, in other words, you really have to rely on your team to make good decisions and find plays. And that's not where I personally want to be in solo queue. This is why, um, you know, years ago I kind of shifted from playing stuff like Janna or Lulu in season six, seven, and part of eight. And then I've stuck mostly with playing engaged champs, most notably Rakan, but also sometimes I'll play things like Nautilus or Leona or whatever, just because you have the ability to kind of control your own destiny. You can actually influence the game a lot more off of those champs. And I know people always say, well, what if my team doesn't follow up? That sucks. I die a lot. It's like, that's true. But at least you have the chance to try to make a play, right? And I think that if you just learn how to do that better, if you learn how to get good vision control and um, c communicate with your team, you know, ping that you're going in before you go in and learn how to make good engages, uh, then I, I think you have the ability to control the game a lot more and to potentially climb a lot more versus if you're just kind of sitting in the back peeling and giving your teammates stats, like your ADC stats. That definitely can work, um, but... I'm just not fully convinced that um, that you're going to have enough control over the game, potentially, if you do that. So that's my only real thing with him is he has virtually no CC. He's got the pushback and the little bit right there, but it's very, very limited CC. So good lane bully. You can hard dominate and snowball that way. You can protect your AD carry if they have a brain and you're giving them a lot of buffs, sort of almost, again, bully-like in the karma sense. And then a little bit of buffs as well but he doesn't have any steroids either real like he has the attack range but he doesn't have like bonus attack damage uh like janna with her shield he doesn't have bonus attack speed or um on attack damage or on hit damage like lulu but he is a much better bully than most of those champs so it's just how much can you leverage that and dominate in the early game with him so he's a lot better than i thought he would be um, at the start and it's mostly off of just how powerful that Q is and the passive and just how much of a bully he can be in the early game by landing these Qs and then trading with your passive and with that W and it's insane healing and it's insane interaction with um, Aerie so I think I mean what does his chart look like as far as like win rate actually that is a very different chart than I was looking at that I was thinking of I thought it was going to be the exact opposite where it's like up for the first 20 and then falls off but it looks like he does do pretty well late late game too with that W. Oh, with uh, if you take Moonstone too, that's another one where every time it ticks, every two seconds with that W, it's virtually guaranteed that you're gonna stack it up a little bit more. Um, now Shirelia's does have a higher win rate, but they're close. I don't know. I'll have to play him and see, but I think he's definitely stronger than I anticipated. Again, mostly off of his early game bully potential even though he was marketed as being really strong because of his ult and like the ability to cleanse stuff, that's cool. But it's really the early game bully. Um, I think that's uh, making him so much stronger than a lot of people expected. Okay, and then we've got Annie. Um, Annie has had several nerfs to her, and it was a little mystifying to me like just why some of the changes made Annie as strong as she is, especially in the support role. But she's still very good. Uh, and the thing is, a lot of people um, don't play her in support. I think she's thought of as, you know, LS kind of popularized her as a noob support, basically. That was always his meme, is everyone should just play Annie in every role. Now, he said this years ago when she was, like, bad, like, pretty bad, right? Before she got all these buffs. Medical house calls recently. are back. 
And she still does have an ever. okay pick Welcome rate at five percent. Man, she's a clocking in at fifty-four and a half percent. Really, it's really strong right now. So what's up with that? ER. Why is Annie so strong they right now? Stitches. And with the um, compassion and bedside manner and there are a few things I didn't even realize days. about and her that make her pretty strong. First of all, Medicare. she has the stun, like right? One point two five seconds, pretty much on demand, undodgeable stun. If you throw a few at him, and it has the potential to be an AOE stun with the W with the R. So that hasn't changed much. That's always been really good with her. Um, her base damage is okay. I don't think they've changed the base damages that much over time. It doesn't have percentage damage or true damage um, or any like special scaling. They have given her more AP scaling over time, I think, which is good for mid Annie. But for support Annie, it's probably not that crazy. The biggest change has been with the Molten Shield. So now she can put it on other people and it's a pretty big shield, right? So it goes up to 220, which most other shields have been nerfed. I think Janna's is like 160 or 170. Lulu's is also like 170 or 180. Most shields have been nerfed. Karma's is like 170. All of those used to be about this range, the 220 to 240, but everything else got nerfed. But for some reason with Annie, <coughs> they're letting her have a 220 shield for three seconds that also does not decay. Um... So that already is pretty strong. Now the AP scaling on it is not phenomenal, but that's okay because again, you're not getting a lot of AP items as support. I guess, I guess you are getting some. Rhyolize is very popular on her. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you also give somebody some extra movement speed for one and a half seconds. So again, Karma-esque type of shield. That seems to be pretty popular. That's what Melio has right now too. Shield plus movement. Um, however, if they attack the person who has the shield on, then they take damage. And they've nerfed this some over time. But especially if you're maxing your shield, which is what most support Annies are doing, then it's going to be a 65 damage reflected with a 0.4 AP ratio, which is pretty good. So if you have 100 AP, that's basically you're doing 105 damage whenever you cast a shield on somebody. But the one thing that I didn't even realize here is that if you target yourself or an ally, then Tibbers also gets it. So you're basically getting two shields. So when Timbers is out, you're effectively getting giving out a 440 shield with a 0.8 ratio because he gets all this too. And you're doing you know upwards of 200 damage on that shield. Um, and that's just if one person hits him, right? It's 100 for every person that hits the uh, champion you put this on or Timbers. And it gives Timbers that bonus movement speed. So that's really, really good. And it's a pretty low cooldown shield at 8 seconds, too. A lot of shields can get down to 8 to 10. That's still very respectable. And its mana cost is reasonable. You know, it's not 100 plus mana. And it has 800 range. Very good. Right? Uh, Lulu's is only 650, and she gets in trouble for that a lot. Trust me, I've tried to play Lulu. That's a little close. Right? Um... You can get engaged on or hit by a lot of collateral stuff, but Annie can hang pretty far back. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, Tibbers itself. Now, that is close. That's 600. But it still does the re respectable damage um, that it used to. Still has the potential for an AoE stun. But Tibbers himself seems a lot stronger than he used to be. Has quite a lot of health, 1,300 health. It does scale with 0.75 of your AP. Now, you're not going to get a ton of AP again, but that is helpful. It's just the fact that you get these shields on Tibbers now. These, like, 300 shields every with CDR every five seconds or something. And you're getting those shields. Does pretty good magic damage on attack and still has that uh, that burn damage. Remember, you got to multiply this by four every second or so. You're doing an extra 40 damage or so. Um over time so and he has pretty good armor pretty like pretty good attack speed but a couple of things here that are interesting to consider that i also wasn't aware of is that he enrages for three seconds when he gets summoned or when you stun an enemy with pyro so typically you want to stun right away on the tibbers i think you still want to do that most of the time but if you have all of your abilities up then you can stun with the Tibbers with your R and then do your other stuff. Then do your shield WQ. Um, and then you just need one more or just cast two more abilities. That's another stun. Um, your Q is on a really short cooldown and you'll probably have your W back up again sometime soon. Um, and then you can enrage Tibbers again. 
And when he's in race for three seconds, he gets 100% bonus movement speed, and he moves pretty quick, 350. So that's a 700 movement speed while he's enraged. And um, he gets a lot of extra attack speed for five attacks. So he's doing a lot more damage than he used to whenever he's enraged. Um, I'm not sure how Smite interacts with him either. That was always a big problem as well, is people would just Smite Tibbers and he would just die virtually instantly. But now if they have Smite, I think Smite does a lot less damage than it used to. I don't know exactly what it is. It's like 800 damage or something versus 1,000. So it won't kill him instantly. Um, and if you back Tibbers out of combat, which again, you probably don't want to do all the time, but if he's low in a really long team fight, you could maybe do this. If you back him out and he gets out of combat, then he heals for 6% of his max health every second. So that's really good against Poke too. And he lasts for 45 seconds. So you can have him up pretty often. So all of this is what's making Annie really strong right now, is that shield is very underestimated, especially because it shields Tibbers every time you shield your ally. Gives movement speed, gives good damage reflection. So she effectively has a lot of AP damage that she's bringing to the table with Tibbers especially, if you can keep him up. And she also has those enchanter elements, and she's got a really good stun um, that's up pretty often. So it's making her good. Uh, she's really strong right now. As far as itemization goes, a lot of people have been rushing Rylai's, uh, which is pretty interesting. So the reason you see Rylai's on her and you don't see it on a lot of other champions is because she has a pet. So whenever Tibbers is uh, close to somebody, then he's going to apply that slow. It's not saying what the slow is. Um... I think it's 15%. It may No, it's actually 30%. Wow. So it used to be 15, and I guess they buffed it at some point, but a 30% slow. Now, remember that Tibbers does that AoE damage ticking for 350 radius around him. So, Sadie, honey. So he's basically going to be applying this slow permanently to everyone within 350 radius. So obviously really really strong if you can keep him up so again that's giving you more utility now you've got a stun you've got this aoe damage you have a big shield and um now you've got this uh slow that you're applying to people also anyone that attacks that molten shield initially um whenever you shield somebody they're going to be slowed for one second as well because that shield's going to reflect damage back on them so she has just a lot of kind of sneaky AoE damage that's possible through the Tibbers Aura, through the Molten Shield you're putting out on people that is going to put a lot of slows up. Um, also, you get 400 health, makes it a lot harder for people to one-shot you, and you're getting 75 AP, which is very respectable. And it's about the cost of a Mythic, 2600. So it's not that far off. You're not getting a Mythic bonus there, but it's pretty good. You don't particularly need the um, ability haste it is nice but tibbers does stay up for a long time if you can keep him alive um, and your other abilities are on a pretty short cooldown so that's about the only thing that's missing is ability haste but otherwise really good option that's a lot cheaper than stuff like demonic embrace um, which has been nerfed several times and is still over 3,000 gold um, or uh whatever the, the little fire item that has pin on it like a lot of these other ap items are going to be three thousand gold even rylai's i think is three thousand or not rylai's um Zanya's is three thousand gold now so that's a big problem with a lot of ap supports is there just aren't good items that are in a support um that are affordable for supports right that are in that 2500 to 2800 uh price bracket but rylai's is one of them and pet champions can use that. So Annie, Brand, or Zyra, Brands, because he has that passive that burns, can sometimes get it too. Uh, but that makes her build path a lot smoother. And Shirelia's is obviously really good with her as well because you have the shield that you can put on allies to give them that little bit of extra movement speed off of Motivate. Obviously really good when you're going for engages to pop it and run up there and just Tibbers on somebody. So she has a really nice one-two punch for items that most other... Um, enchanters and AP champs just don't have right now especially AP champs so you can go the Shrelias and Rylies and it's perfect and typically you're not going to be able to afford much more than that in most games um, 
so that's not that big of a deal. And you can still get other enchanter stuff if you need to, like Mikhail's, and not feel completely. Everyone wants to make their mark on the world. Buffs up your shield but why bit. make just one? Uh, make it. Yeah, many. that's what's making Annie really ask, good. She applies what difference can I make in the Air Force? amount of protection and pressure during the laning phase, holding that stun up really can threaten people especially the ganks coming in and then obviously post six she's a beast um and tibbers can even help take down towers it can help you on you know baron uh dragons there's a lot of different uses for tibbers so really strong i haven't personally tried it out um but maybe i'll try it out again soon and just kind of on that note as well i'm kind of creeping up on getting back to diamonds uh, I, i'm probably going to keep cranking recon until i can make that happen but once I get there, then um, I'll try to level up my Smurf a little bit more, maybe kind of move back through Gold and Platinum, and I'll try out a bunch of different champs um, and get a bit more of that diversity there. I just really wanted to get back to Diamond because I missed it um, last season. I can't remember if I missed it the season before, but it's been one or two seasons um, where I've kind of capped out at Platinum 1, and I just wanted to see Diamond again, dang it. <laughs> so I'm just uh, kind of in somewhat try-hard mode with Recon this season so far. Anyways, okay, last couple of champs. I don't want this video to be too long, but I did want to cover those because I didn't talk about, obviously, Melio wasn't available last patch, and I didn't talk a ton about Annie, partially because I didn't fully understand why she was so strong. Like, I knew they buffed the shield, but once I read it and thought about it a little bit more, and, you know, especially that the shield affects your champion and Tibbers, um, and just that interaction with Rylai's, uh, I'm starting to see the light. I'm seeing why she's really good right now. Okay, and then Sona, um, and I'll move through the rest of these a little bit faster, because I think there hasn't been that much that's changed with several of these champs in the meta, but there are a couple of notable changes that I'll, I'll get to. So Sona, um, the uh, Archangels was nerfed a little bit, but I think she still goes Rod, Archangels, and she's just kind of a good scaling team fight champ for later on. Uh, very simple execution. You can just hang out in the back, just spam your auras. Everyone yes, wants to make their mark on the world. More, but why make? Um, you can optimize that a little bit more. Make sure that you're getting the green Everyone shot. Everyone wants to make their the mark on the shot, world. Which is basically like but why a make just one? Uh, make many. You may ask. But for the most part, you can hang out in the back and spam your abilities and still do really well with her. Now I don't know. Um, Rod is still kind of the best, like really greedy way to do it. That has nice interactions for late game, but Shirelia's is still where a lot of people want to go with her. At least that help you're helping your teammates engage a lot better if you have Shirelia's. Um, she has a lot of good poke early on. It's very easy to stack up tier. Um, so that's why Archangels is so nice on her because she still can have mana problems. But you just spam your Q over and over again in the laning phase. And you're going to do a little bit of poke damage to them with Aerie. But you're also going to stack up your passive to get additional ability haste. Or I don't know if that's her passive. It's part of her ult. Whatever it is that gives you the additional ability haste, you're going to stack up that uh, currency. Um, and you're going to stack up tier really, really fast. So, very good item on her with Archangels. You can combine it, again, with Shirelia's if you want the engage. Or especially if you have a lot of tank, like Moonstone could be good. But you are very squishy, you don't have any dashes, you do have some mobility that you can offer your team with the E, but um, overall, you just she's the quintessential chill in the back enchanter, do some poke, and then if you see an opportunity, she does have the AoE ultimate that you can layer together with other CC. You can flash ult if you need to sometimes, but typically you wanna save that flash for defensive purposes, um, if you can, because you don't have a lot of defense. But it's great to layer this with like a Vi ult or a Sejuani ult. There's a lot of champions that have Engage that are being played, especially in the jungle right now. So um, just using this as follow-up is typically a better strategy. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned before, she's not necessarily my cup of tea just because it is harder to force fights with her. But she does scale extremely well. She can play off of a bunch of different champions. You're not completely dependent on your ADC having a brain. All your team has to do is just group up late game. Um, even if your ADC is struggling, if your mid and your top lane are doing well and you can just heal them up you know, with your W and just buff them up with your E, with your Q, you can still win the game. So just get all five people on the screen, A ram it, late game, and you're probably gonna win with Sona. So it's really on them to stop you from getting multiple items because her 
buffs. She just gives out more than almost anybody with her Q, her W, and her E all giving out nice buffs. They all trigger Airy. They all trigger Moonstone. They all trigger Staff of Flowing Water or Ardent Sensor if you want to get those. So she is just the queen of late game team fights. If you can not die and just keep your teammates up, it's going to be really hard for the enemy to win. So she's just kind of a ticking time bomb turbo scaler that they have to um, that they have to contend with. So especially if you're like silver and lower, um, particularly if you hate engaged champions or you just can't ever quite figure out the right time to engage, she's a really good alternative that I highly recommend, um, especially for, for newer players or players that are playing in like silver, gold, bronze, that type of stuff. Because your mission is very simple. Don't die, press buttons, and you know buff up your teammates. Uh, okay. So yeah, Sona, really good. Highly recommend her if you want to play an Enchanter. She has a high win rate. Um, let me just real quick open this door up just so the cat won't quit pestering me. Okay, here you go. My wife closed the door and the cat's like just walking around. Oh, she's still going to come over here and pester me, it looks like. Um, but anyways... Really strong. Uh, Thresh, still pretty good. Um, a big problem with Thresh, especially this season, but in the past, has been that um, there's so much anti-CC. There's so much tenacity right now, especially with the green pet, Mercury Treads, um, the tenacity rune in the green tree, um, Legend tenacity in the yellow tree. There, there's a lot of stuff out there um, with uh, the tenacity stuff, and it's really hard for him to get his, you know, kind of all ins if his hook doesn't last for a long time. Now, they did nerf Tenacity um, recently, so that has helped him out. But they also lowered the cooldown on his hook. I think it was only one second, but that's pretty significant because when he gets to max level hook um, and he gets a bunch of ability haste, you can get that hook down to like seven seconds or so, maybe even a little bit lower than that with kind of traditional items. I mean, obviously you can do meme builds with like cosmic, um, the cosmic mask and you know, you could do like a 200 ability haste, you know, build with thresh that some all caps are as probably done and get like infinite duration hooks just about. But in most normal games of League of Legends playing against real opponents, you can probably get it to like seven seconds. And whenever you land your hook, it lowers the cooldown by three seconds. So, that means he's going to have this hook that you, that's going to be up every four seconds or so, four or five seconds, and that is a really um, that's a really low cooldown for such a high impact ability because it's one and a half seconds on a hook, right? Like Leona can do that too with her Q, but it's point blank and it's only one point two five seconds, um, and I think they buffed his E damage significantly. So if you go E max second, I think they gave it like forty extra damage, so he has a lot more kind of kill potential. Um, especially in kind of the early to mid game when you're maxing that out second. And I do think you go for Q max and then E max after that. You can still max Lantern second if you want, but they nerfed the shield on that a little bit. Um, and as far as items go, he probably still just wants to go Locket. I know that I said Locket like wasn't that inspiring. Um, you probably can go Radiant. Radiant, I would imagine, is going to have a higher win rate, but again, it is expensive. It's hard to deal with that. Um, or it's hard to be able to afford that as a support. Let me just pull him up here real quick. But he does have a pretty high win rate right now. Now, he's extremely high skill cap, too, so you got to put some time in on Thresh. You're not just going to walk in and have a high win rate on Thresh, usually. you got to get a bunch of losses while you're learning him. He does kind of fall off late game, and the reason is so many people have tenacity. His hook is fairly easy to dodge unless it's coming out of a bush, and there just are so many tanks right now, and historically, I don't have any updates. Still haven't closed. Larry, are we still hook, on for three? Uh, you know, the Cho'Gath or the Cyrox. When you and your team really need space to work, I didn't get that attack. Really I'm him sending him it. So you and a place to eat. Get to their, Carl, is that um, mackerel? No, it's a uh, trout. Backline versus with something like Recon, <laughs> you can, right? If you want to, like you can R it matters and then where you W and get to their Fish backline. Tacos? If you have someone else that dives, now you may not always want to do that, Hilton but you have the option the to stay. do that. Um, in some situations, and then things like Nautilus can get to the backline with his R potentially. Things like Leona with her R, 
So a lot of these other engaged chants can at least partially bypass the um, the tanks on the front line and get on that back line if you have a dive comp. You've got a Kaisa with a Zed or you know a Kali or just something else that can go with you on that back line. Um, he doesn't have that option versus some other tanks do. But what really you know makes him special is that very low cooldown Q that's a 1.5 second stone, which is big. The lantern is going to allow your teammates to get out of a bunch of sticky situations. It also gives you really good gank assist. If your jungler like comes up the lane or something and you toss him a lantern um so that opens up a lot of unique escape paths and unique engage opportunities that other champs just don't have i mean he's one of the coolest champs of all time right i don't think anyone's going to argue with that it's like thresh and lee sin i think are historically thought to be the best designed champions in league's history or certainly very far up there um so yeah with radiant yeah it has the higher win rate um it's definitely worth considering. Again, everybody gets Locket, but it's kind of a trap. It has a lower win rate. It does help you peel and protect. And if you combine this with something like Redemption, which is historically a good combo with him, because Redemption's going to give you that extra 16% healing and shielding for this. And if you're maxing Lantern second, it affects the healing and shielding on Lantern. So that is, and it's just really good in team fights. So that's nice. Um, I still think that Even Shroud is probably underrated. That could be pretty good. Um, and I think that you might want to consider going Glacial on him. I know that Aftershock is popular too. Guardian is also pretty good. But the thing with Aftershock is a lot of times you don't necessarily have to go in on Thresh. And uh, by the time you do, by the time that animation allows you to swoop in over there, you've already wasted like half of your Aftershock or something. So it just feels like it's not as impactful it's still good they all have about the same win rate but especially if you are kind of on peel duty if you're just fishing for hooks but you're hanging out in the back peeling your adc with your flay and your r a lot of times then glacial might be a better choice guardian's also good at that protecting adcs but it's just a really versatile champ it's got good offense um at least for a while uh with his q and then the the w the e and the r all provide like pretty good defensive and offensive capabilities Similar to Melio, right? This E stops a lot of engaged champs. If you've got a Leona going on your ADC or um, Jarvan trying to flag and drag or Zach trying to fly over a wall or whatever, that displacement is very nice. Um, so he's still really good. And again, the stuff that has helped him out is more damage on the E, just allowing you to snowball. I don't think that's updated. I, I think it's like 260 now or something. on the E. Maybe I'm crazy. That said 235, right? Maybe it was lower than that. Hold on. Let me see real quick. I know we're running out of time. I could have sworn they updated that, though. Thirteen point four. Okay. They did give it 20 more, but it was only 215. God, that's so low. That's pathetic. Um... They reduced Dark Shield. Cooldown was lowered. Okay, two seconds. That's actually really big. I thought it was just one second cooldown. Um, and he got 20 X. So he gets 20 extra damage on the Q. He gets 20 extra damage on um, the E. They gave him better AP ratios too, but that's kind of a, a trap. It does work really well with his passive because that gives AP and armor. Um... Okay, so anyways, Thresh, still going to be pretty good. Blitzcrank, nothing really new on that front. Um, you land your hook, people die. There are quite a few immobile champions that people are picking out there that can be strong. Now, there are more tanks too, right? There's more Cho's, Scion, Sejuani's, and those are really bad hook targets. You are seeing um, you know, things like Nautilus, things like Leona coming back in the meta a little bit more. But historically, he's very good against Thresh because... Um, Thresh stuns himself for half a second to throw his hook, basically, while he winds up. And whenever he does that, if Blitz is in range, you just hook him. Your hook is stronger. You're going to pull him all the way over to you. Thresh is usually pretty squishy for an engaged champ in the early game before he has a lot of souls. And you just, um, you know, roll your hand across the keyboard and kill him with your ADC. So, Blitz, historically, very hard counter to Thresh. Very good against Annie. Again, you can pull her in. Now, if Tibbers is out, Tibbers can body block that hook. 
Um, but historically great against things like Annie, Sona, Melio. None of these champs have dashes. They're all super squishy. Um, and so those are very popular uh, champions and wonderful targets for thresholds. Now, Rakan, extremely good against Blitzcrank. So keep that in mind. It, you're almost never going to hit a Rakan with a hook if he has a brain. I know I've been hit by it sometimes, but um, it's really, really hard to hit Rakan with a hook. Now, if you hit Rakan's partner, Rakan has a hard time dealing with that because all he can do is try to go in and shield, and you break the shield with your ult a lot of times. So if he's paired together with something like a Varus that doesn't have an escape, then Blitz could still be okay. But yeah, as far as like support targets, Rakan is a pretty tough one. And then against Nautilus and Leona, it just kind of depends. Nautilus is pretty squishy. You can probably kill him early. Um, but yeah, so he's kind of a situational counter pick, but there are a lot of champions that he does really well into um, right now. Of course, you want to be careful picking him into things like Samira and Sivir that have... Um, ways to block the hook or stuff that can dodge it really easily things like lucian vein ezreal is probably one of the worst ones because even if you hit the hook he can still e and start that animation get out of it tristana so there are a lot of champs that can get out of the hook um then we've got nautilus they did give nautilus some buffs recently to help him out uh he had felt really squishy whenever i tried him So he did feel kind of squishy. They gave him a little bit more shield, I think. They lowered the mana, which is huge. So now you can actually use it to help you last hit wards, which is pretty good. Um, I think they gave it a bit more shield strength. But in general, yeah, this has a lot of very reliable CC. That R is still incredibly powerful in a lot of matchups. Um, just virtually guarantees you're going to hit at least one person, usually multiple people in a team fight. Really fat hitbox with the hook. You can't go over walls with it, obviously but it's one of the best to hit open field has a really short wind up time very easy to hit um, and then he has some wave clear with his e so nautilus fantastic kit has been that way for years and years at this point for support it's all just a question of are his stats strong enough right can he survive um or is he just going to get blown up and does he do enough damage to actually finish off kills and i think right now he's it's getting there He's a little bit, um, he's getting back to his former glory, which some people may love, some people may hate. But he's, he's pretty good. My verdict is uh, good, reliable CC, but very squishy um, and dies to a lot of things if he falls behind. Leona, um, lots of CC, some of the lowest cooldown CC in the game. She's been hit pretty hard by a lot of that tenacity out there, very similar to what I was talking about with Thresh, um, because none of her CC is a knockup. At least Nautilus is a knockup. And even his hook, you know, displaces them, and they have that little bump when they run together in the air. So Nautilus does get around tenacity a little bit. Blitz obviously gets around tenacity because he just pulls them all the way to him and knocks him up. So tenacity does virtually nothing against Blitzcrank. Um, but Leona gets hit really hard by tenacity because usually she wants to chain her CC together, her E and then her Q and then her ult a lot of the times, or the ult into the E. But if they have enough tenacity... They might be able to break your chain and flash in there in the middle or use a stopwatch or use one of their dashes or whatever. Use Gale Force. Um, so that makes it pretty tough. There is a lot of mobility. Um, there is Gale Force. There's a lot of stuff that can um, avoid Leona's ult particularly. Um, it's got a really obvious cast animation if someone's paying attention. More and more ADCs can afford to take cleanse these days. Um, so it, it, is, it is tough. Uh, to work with Leona, but if you get ahead, then you can snowball um, pretty hard. She can go through the minion wave. She has quite a bit of damage, and again, very low cooldowns on all of her abilities, including her ults, only 90 seconds. So you can keep making plays off of her pretty easily. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll, I'll keep this under an hour. I will say Yumi did get reworked. I think her play pattern is very, very similar. She does have a higher win rate than she did, so it's totally possible. I could see an argument to put her in A tier. Um, I think that's reasonable. I just have her down here because it's still, you know, you're heavily reliant on your ADC to have a brain. I think it's a lot worse if you go off of your ADC onto something like a Hecarim or a Viego or whatever else might be fed on your team. She can still do it, but you lose quite a few of your bonuses if you're not with your quote-unquote best friend, which is almost always going to be um, your ADC. 
And then Senna is kind of making a comeback. I'd have to examine this a little bit more. I haven't seen it very often, but it looks like things just like Umbral, um, Black Cleaver is helping her out quite a bit now because then that gives you just more buffs. You can play around with your allies. She does have a lot of lane dominance still. She's got a 52 or 53% win rate, so look out for her um, when paired together with Caitlyn or these other types of push champs. Maybe she's pretty good. Nami's still okay. Obviously really good with Lucian. Lucian's sort of fallen out of the meta a little bit, but she's still reasonable with other champs. She did get nerfed a bit. I forgot, was it her W? Was her W or her E? Um, so she still has an okay win rate. She's all right. Again, you could put her up in tier two. I think that would be reasonable. Um, I did skip Malachi and Renata. Not a lot's happening there. Malachi, the tank version, is still pretty good as support. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same that it has been. Lots of CC, but really limited engage range. Um, really good vision with the saplings, though. And then Renata is seeing a little bit more pro play. Um, very good if you combine her with some hyperscaling champs that benefit from the attack speed and the move speed quite a bit. So Vayne just got buffed on this patch. Maybe okay with Vayne. You see her with Jinx sometimes. Um, very good counter engage with her ult. Pretty good trading with longer range champs. Um, so she's okay. Still has an okay win rate. A lot of people just forgot about her, but she's silently just like, all right, you know? Um, she's pretty reasonable. And then Lulu has kind of fallen off a bit. Obviously still good in specific cases. Twitch, Cogmaw, things like that. They did increase the cooldown on her W, which was kind of rough for a while there. She has very short range. She has a low win rate for... An enchanter right at like 48 or 49 percent so still playable still decent um again i could see an argument for her being tier two and i don't think that'd be totally wrong um but she's okay like a lot of other enchanters um it's just really hard to make plays with her and she just doesn't have as much guaranteed power as something like sona um with the scaling and then i think that something like um uh, Leo is just going to be a much better bully early on in the game and then annie's just going to be a lot more versatile and have more kill threat um later on in the game and then dinger's still okay if you really want good push and poke i think i had lux is like still pretty good push and poke soraka's great if you have um a lot of tanks on your team and you think you just want to protect them and just heal as much as possible um, you got like a Cho'Gath or a Scion or whatever. She can be good. Janna is still like okay at peeling. I think Melio is kind of taking over that spot right now though. And that his Q is just a better version of her Tornado in a lot of situations. And then his ult is just going to protect people potentially better than her ult. So I think Melio is just kind of squeezing out Janna um, right now. He's obviously way better in the early game. But even late with all the nerfs that she's had, he might be a little bit stronger. And then Zyra and Brand are still okay if you hard dominate and lane with them. It's just, like I talked about earlier um, with Annie, it's just the itemization is not amazing on them, but um, maybe just something like Rylize could be okay. Now, Annie can run in and like force a like pretty high percentage fight off of Shirelia's um, plus Tibbers, right? That's very scary. People have to respect that. Zyra and Brand really don't want to run in like that. So that kind of leaves them in a weird spot with their other item. Usually they have to get like Leandries or Ludens, and that's a lot more expensive. So they don't quite have that curve that Annie does, where she can get a 2,500 gold item with Shirelia's and then a 2,600 gold item with Rylai's, and just become a lot more relevant a lot faster in the game. But anyways, okay, that's it. Uh, I did throw these three down here. Like, you don't see them a lot, but like Scion, Cho'Gath, and Vagar all have potentialist support, I think. Um, they have pretty low win rates, so they're probably bad, but you know, they have really good CC. They have pretty good scaling. I think Scion and Cho probably, they just need health. Like, they need items to really unlock their full, like, monster potential from the top lane. So they need that farm. But, you know, maybe they have enough CC where you could consider them as support. They do have nice utility. Like, Cho has that really low cooldown knockup. It's a six-second knockup on the Q now. He's got a silence. He has a lot of true damage. Um... And then Scion, of course, has that armor shred, and he has pretty good wave clear. So um, maybe, but probably bad. But if you want to try something different, they could be okay. Same thing with Vagar. Like, that stun is really good. It's very good against Rakan. Um, and you can stack up your Q a lot easier now, but you are very squishy. You are extremely vulnerable to engages. So um, he does have stacking off of his AP, but I just think he's not going to be as strong as he is like right now in the mid lane um but anyways that's it thank you very much uh be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and i'll see you next time